Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, men and women. Welcome to Tony Commander J.R. Kopokwa Chesson Talk Show. Today is January the 23rd. We are in the weekend. And our, my topic for this morning is a quote from the great Abraham Lincoln. Why? I felt it right to start my show this morning. Well, I started a little late to give all my Liberian people who just waking up and those who just moving around in Liberia and doing nothing an opportunity for you to watch my show this morning live to come on and hear Tony Commander J.R. Cheson lesson for today. So let me begin with this quote from Abraham Lincoln that is so great. It is devoid of politics. It presents to us the essence of what we hope to achieve for ourselves and our future as men and women, as conscious thinking people, as sound thinking men and women of every race, creed, religion. And this great quote is, the best way to predict your future is to create it, a quote by Abraham Lincoln. Let me repeat it again. The best way to predict your future is to create it. Now let me put my lesson up so we can start my show today. My three topics are one, African Africa's immigrant American citizens must create a future in America. Liberia and Liberian people are hostages in Liberia. Who are Liberians? Let's get into my lesson. Number one, Africa immigrant American citizens must create a future in America. And that is why in touching on this topic of us coming from Africa who are not African Americans, but who are here to be proud citizens of this nation, to share in the protection as well as the richness, the happiness, the blessings of the United States of America. 
and our brothers and sisters who have decided not to be citizens yet, but are residents. And entitled to most of the benefits except the right to vote and participate in active politics as they want to. That does not mean they can't participate in politics. They can't just vote. But they can still have a voice, influential voice in our country. And that's the basis of Africans in America, African immigrants who are not African Americans. And we, after this COVID-19, after four years of Donald Trump, we must come to the realization now that we need a cohesive leadership in America. We need a sound thinking and productive leadership for our interests, for our citizenship and welfare in the United States of America. We see now America is confused. Donald Trump has destroyed this country and set us backwards in this unity, diversiveness, failures, un-American behaviors. He has set us so far back that now we've got to renew our whole inventive processes for bringing America back to our senses, to law and order to unity, concise interests of our Congress in the welfare and well-being of all Americans and not only Republicans and the Democrats. We have lost a sense of who we are because of one corrupt president who was smart enough to manipulate the system. Who would have thought in this day and age, that there could be a coup d'etat in America. Who we are told that? I'm still reading from the disbelief of what happened and what people like Mitch McConnell, all powerful, almighty, have caused to happen by just putting this evil man. We almost lost our democracy. Our country was almost destroyed. We almost joined Russia and Vladimir Putin in that disgruntled and disruptive country called Russia. Now look at Russia today. Y'all better rise up. My Russian people, y'all better rise up and get rid of this communist system. Get rid of this Vladimir Putin and this evil man. Just what he did try to do to America, y'all do it to Russia. Get your leader of the prison. They try to kill that man. Just that these evil leaders in our world today, and we got to have people of caution thinking and leading and speaking for our people. We have nobody speaking for us. We come in America as Africans. We just want to run amok and think the same things American people, we are entitled, as we are entitled to it. We're not. Not if we divide it. Not if we have, we have re, greed filled, deceitful African immigrant citizens in this country want to lead Africans just like our leaders in Liberia, in, in Africa. They're all the same people. But we come here and behave like when we come to America, we're free. I hope you're learning now. I hope Donald Trump has brought to your senses that this is not our country, if we don't pay attention to our rights and interests and prosperity and advancement and future, we'll be sent back to Africa. Our African-American brothers and sisters are just learning of their own strengths and powers in their own country. They're just getting awakened because from the 1960s today, they were still fighting against each other. The North different from the South. The Black in the North different from the Blacks in the South. Man, the ignorance all through Black people and Black Negro world. They made us disgruntled. 
They made us frustrated. And we got to create our future. And just how the great Abraham Lincoln is the father of the Republicans who claim to want to own America and turn us into a communist nation under Vladimir Putin. Look at all the people talking about they don't like Joe Biden. Look at the kind of people talking about they don't like Joe Biden. Look at the towns and cities those people come from. Nothing there. Nothing. The people who talk against Joe Biden, look at them. Tell me if there are people who care about America or they care about themselves. Look at those people. They're selfish. They're greed-filled. And they're racist. They are racist. Look at all of them talking the stupidness. They're racist. And we cannot be afraid to say this. Our people have paid too much price for this, for all to come this far and turn our back. And you Liberian and African people, you better pay attention to yourselves in America. <clears throat> Look at how they just fire us with impunity. Just lie on us and take our jobs from us. Then we go to our African people. We can't trust them because they scared of the white people. They're scared of living in their own country. And all of them got PhD and masters and this degree and that degree, but they're worthless. Just how they're worthless in Africa today. They got men like George Weir leading our country. They got men like Bobby Wine fighting to free his country from a dictator when his people have no hope. But can you trust Bobby Wine? Is he politically astute? Is he politically educated enough to lead a big country like that? Or will he come up and start killing people his by himself, bringing his tribe into government, trying to protect himself because of his lack of education, leadership ability and skills, and the honesty? of understanding that your leadership is for all people. And whether you are scared or not, you got to get there and lead as a leader. You think Joe Biden not scared right now? Look at how Americans fighting and evil and trying to kill our people. American people are not used to this thing. After 400 years of peaceful existence, only trampling upon Negro people, and the rest of the white people uniting against all the minorities. It was a peaceful time. Nine towns had changed. You got intermixing of the races. You think why America changed like this? Because too many of us are mixed. Too many of us are conscious that we are white just as we are blacks. And we cannot hide it no more. Those false white people who pretending they're white and they know they're black. Got to get off the born band working and understand that your children are finding out who they are. And the more they find out, there will be unity among the races. Because the deception and lies in America have been perpetrated for centuries. Look at me and my people. We are part of the Thomas Jefferson family. But my people in Africa are so dumb to what it means to them and what it means to us. They don't understand what it means to us. You know, even if they understand, they just think it means running behind white people for wealth, for opportunities for ourselves. No, 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 it's greater than that. Me knowing that I'm a descendant of Thomas Jefferson empowers me to speak for my people. Because I know now, I'm not only black, I'm white, and the color of my skin don't mean shit. My mentality is black and white. And when we raise our consciousness to the consciousness of our white fathers, we are sell under the darkness of Negrodom. We are sell under the darkness of impoverished and enslaved mentally people. 
Let me tell you something. When I went to Thomas Jefferson Monticello for the reunion of Thomas Jefferson descendants, and 600 of us were sitting down as descendants, and you couldn't tell white from black. You couldn't tell mulatto from black. I mean, it was unbelievable. I look around our room. There were as much white people as black people, descendants of Thomas Jefferson. And we're all sitting in that room together. And when I left that ceremony and went back to my hotel, the people at my hotel had heard that people of Thomas Jefferson, descendants, black people were in that hotel. Asked my wife, Karen McLaurin Chesson. When we got to the hotel, there were white people standing up to meet me and shake my hand. One of the white men said to me, the men were trembling. The man said, he said, I'm so honored to meet a black descendant of Thomas Jefferson. He said, this is one of the greatest opportunities I've had in my life. He said, Congrats. The man was out of this world, he was born out of this world. And that was his, him and his whole family sitting there to meet me at the hotel because they heard one of Thomas Jefferson's descendants were at the hotel. I wasn't there for myself. I wasn't there to enrich myself for sitting with all the, the Monticello executives and people know that not my thing. Those people did us great well, great goodness. But they are not descendants of Chama Jefferson. I am a descendant of Chama Jefferson. And they, they brought it to the full enlightenment of the American society, of who we are that Thomas Jefferson fathered black children. But when our black people are not enlightened, when we do understand where our position in life is, we'll always settle for mediocrity. We'll always settle for cheapness. We'll always settle for zombie dancers. We'll always settle for Rasta singers. We are always sent settle, settle for anything that is worthless and kill all our educated people because we think they're liars. We think they don't mean nothing to us. But the ones that come to us and tell us, you're living okay. You're trying the best. You give us the money and we tell you what to do. We build the schools and everything in our name. We build and, and monkey bridges. With, with, with cement and fix it all kind of way. When we leave and you're four in the river and thinking of that, that the next administration, they're not us. But we are native people. You trust us. Don't listen to the Congo people. Even though they brought us to where we are today, we finish killing them. We continue to kill them. You don't listen to fucking preacher, zombie dancer, Prince Johnson, Imagine every snow, and what the other one in chambers and and and, and, and gray that useless. Slump. I know a carrier did gray from the slump in that Monrovia. There, all the people y'all listen to them. See where we carry you, okay? But I can't be in that mess. I gotta speak for my African people in America. I don't care about the people in Africa. Y'all not kill me, American people. I don't care about Africa. Y'all want us exploited? We're exploited. But let's do it together. Y'all give me my share too. Y'all can't exploit Africa without giving me my share. So that if the Africans won't remain stupid and let us exploit Africa, let us exploit Africa. <clears throat> but in America, we can't be exploited too. We got to share in the system. We won't be in the mainstream. We won't have word in policy making in Africa so uh, we can make sure our community enjoy the wealth. The African Americans fighting for themselves yet because they're just realizing their power in America. They need us too. But they can't fight for us now. We got to fight for ourselves. We got to fight for ourselves. Because when it comes to dividing the wealth, African-Americans got to come first. 
Just that we're doing like Bill and Dookie and all those people, we say no, they don't belong in our society. But the Africans, they will stand for uh, with us when Africa got a problem. But when country dividing the Liberian wealth, the Ghanaian wealth, the Liberian wealth, the, the federal union wealth, everybody identified their citizens first. So if we play fools and think that when it comes to dividing the wealth, we would get the same share as an African American. You must be kidding. The only time we get that free share, except we got a word in the people who share in the pot. And as long as we don't achieve that level in America, we are useless people. Our voices mean nothing. Our voices mean only mean things to our African people when we can go and, and incite them to rise up against the government. And I tie it with that stupidness. I tie it with playing in black people's stupid politics. I don't want to do it no more. Because our politics is diversive. Our people are diverse in our thinking, in our acting, in our belief, in our advocacy, in our activism. We're still diverse. And only people like young, your Cindy, Poye and all the people are, are stressed here are becoming wise to our rights, our privileges, our opportunities, and our abilities in America. And she pursuing it and telling you, you need to get up and get involved with mainstream American society. Because we can't build Africa or ourselves if we keep only advocating in Africa and forgetting that we are American citizens. As American citizens, we deserve a piece of the pie here, not in Liberia or in Africa. We are citizens of the United States of America. We deserve our rights here, not in Africa, that our second home. If our people there want to be dumb and stupid, let us empower ourselves here and control America's policy towards African nations. The ones that are developing will pump money in it. The ones that are sick and, and useless, we seek to change the mentalities of the people, to show them the brighter light of democracy, constitutional democracy. Private sector, in entrepreneurship, in well, you know why I'm talking your business people. Intrapreneurship. You know why I'm talking. Those things are twisting my tongue this morning. I ain't got time for all of that. But building businesses and empowering individuals who have, or groups who have the, 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 the foresight and vision to do business in our country, to empower our people financially. With our government intervention, those are the things that make us in America as African immigrant American citizens strong in this country and be more able to help African Americans because we'll be a cohesive collective group seeking our own interests, but willing to join the general interests of the American people, not only African-Americans, American people too, white people who stand out with us. We are a mixed society. How many Africans not married to white women and have mixed children? How many Guineans and Ugandans and, and Sierra Leoneans? We plenty here. We gotta protect our children. We gotta protect ourselves. So our children can look white, our children can go look brown, our children can look black. Color is not the essence of who we are. Our mentalities make us who we are. My young children, that's why I told the commander chess and calls, enlightenment, teaching, not just talking politics, and talk about George Weir and the useless government like we are coming to get on them now. But we can't I can't spend my time on all of the things. I can't spend my time 
on trying to help my people elevate their lives, change their livelihood, excel our nation and people with the same old criminals leading our country. The same old young foolish people with our vision all over the world, they're talking foolishness and not knowing about their country or seeking people who can help them to open their minds and their eyes of who Africans, who Africans are in America. We have a duty to teach American people, white and black, of who we are, that we are men and women of pride and dignity, of competence, of strengths. Yes, we have weaknesses too. That's human nature. And they can't use our weaknesses to, de to characterize all of us. We are a part of this great American nation. Rise, open your eyes, think, and listen to a Tony Commander, J.R. Kropokwa Chesson, the light of Africa in the world. Before I begin my second lesson, I want to extend a hearty welcome to United States Ambassador Michael A. McCarthy to the Republic of Liberia. I know you didn't understand, George Weir. I know you are confused and perplexed and mesmerized by what was coming out of that man's mouth. Yes. That's supposed to be English. Yes, that's not real English. Why? Our president is a slum footballer and dweller. By the grace of God, he was accelerated to give Liberian people hope, to lead Liberian people in his endeavors to give us mental and physical strength. Not as president, but as a great athlete of the world who is from Liberia, who inspired us in our, deep, deep, in our darkest hours by his international performance on the world stage, in the sport that is the beautiful game of all the world. Who can play soccer? And like all the other people of the world, like the man who named the game a beautiful game, Pelé, we, we are the same people the same black people, the same suffering and troubled people. Look at our great Hank Aaron that died yesterday. Undeniably great. One of the greatest of the great. And because of his color, the color of his skin, not his abilities. Not his heart, not his love for this country mattered to the people of this country. 
all that matter to them. If you're not white, you're not right. And our great father of America, Abraham Lincoln, has dealt with us on the political scene as well as on the survival scene. And the quote I just quoted for him is my quote for every one of my topics today. The best way to predict your future is to create it. What future do we have for Liberia right now? We do not have a future. Ellen Johnson Sally took our future away from us just to be president of Liberia, and that is no lie. That is the damn truth. How will one woman in 1980 join the group to overthrow our president? Our long-lasting institution of government and leadership kill our fathers, had our own people tie our fathers to the pool and execute them. Even the heavens got pissed off. Liberia got dark, and the rain that poured in Liberia in one or two minutes almost flooded the whole city because the act that they had committed was a lasting sin upon Liberia and Liberian people. And we've been going through it for nearly 50 years now. But you see your juju people, you see your gore people, and none of you got the wisdom to see it. Because when you're a Christian, when you're a Christian, Jesus may not tell you why he do things right away. He will let you live through it. Then he will show you, say, you see why I did that? Many things that happened in my life before this COVID-19, I looked at it as bad. But just the other day I was in bed and Jesus, the voice just came to me. You would have been dead by now if I didn't pull you away from some of the things that were in your life. I didn't anticipate COVID-19. Nobody anticipated it. Right now, I'm hearing of some of my friends that died because of COVID-19. And many things I was involved with that Jesus pulled me out of. And I got mad. And we kept asking, why you did that to me? I can see it now. Because I was sitting there watching TV out of the blue. The word just came to me. You see why I pulled you out of the society? And I look at it, I turn to my web. I say, oh, Jesus is a great man. My God is a great God. That's why you can't question Jesus Christ. When things happen in your life, you can't say why. No, there's a reason. And it's divine if you're spiritual. If you're not spiritual, you will go jump out of the window and kill yourself. You will go start committing crime, thinking your life finished. No, no, no. But Jesus opened my eyes these few years. Because I couldn't predict my future. None of us in Liberia can predict our futures. We've been held hostage for nearly 15 years from Ellen Johnson Sullivan to now. And all of us praising the same people that do these things to us, just like we praise Tottenham. Just like we praise all the progressive people that came and said they wanted to free Liberia. What have they done to free us? Nothing. Nothing. Liberia is God's country. Only God can free us. God protected us from the Germans in World War I and World War II. He protected us from our enemies. Mussolini and all those people who want to destroy the only African country supporting America in the world. Giving America access to our country to use as an airport refueling station. And we still weren't worthy to be called Americans. We still weren't worthy to be a protectorate of America. But that was a blessing. 
Everything that happened to us in Liberia is a blessing. The world is changing. We have our country. Our fathers, white fathers, bought Liberia for us. Put in our country, in our constitution, that we can't sell our land. We can't give our land to citizens for who are not black people. Why? Because they knew their own brothers and sisters wanted to enslave us still. But they were our fathers. And they knew if they continued treating us the way they were treating us, the sins of them would be on their white children too. And that's why it's coming to now. Why you think that America is breaking down? Because the deceitfulness of the white fathers, the deceitfulness of the races who want to enslave our people. You can't screw our women, have children by them. Then you want to enslave us too. We can, it can happen. And it's against the divine teaching of the almighty God. And that is why if we want to predict our future now in Liberia, in the state we are in, we are leaders. We are people we can trust. We are people who can protect our interests and welfare and money. We are people who can protect our lives and especially the lives of our baby children. Listen to Tim uh, Timothy, son in, uh, Timothy Village Boy Smith this morning. I posted his thing on my page of all the things he was talking happening in our, our country. By the women themselves who cry here. Yeah. Oh, oh, they're ripping us, they're ripping us. How many women in Liberia ripping young boys while their husbands in the bed with them sleeping? The same thing the men that do in Liberia, get up in the night and creep on their children and, and step children. The same thing the women doing. The same thing the women doing. But if we don't talk about it, the women will, will no make us look bad, make themselves look good. And these women are good. That's why I tell you, everybody the same. Women, men, all of got the same characters, the same traits, the same evil. Eve was the one who fooled Adam to do wrong. She had a persu persuasion. And after she saw him, how the thing was sweet, Adam and mine were blown. Adam and mine were blown. He had to go eat all the apple. He didn't want to stop eating the apple. And then God called him again. He said, my man, you forgot about me? Are you stupid? Then he started cowering. And then that's why he punished him. Separated his children, Cain and Abel, to set an example of right and wrong, of betrayal, of lies, of treachery. So whether Abel was good and he preserved things and all the good things that he said about Abel, he joined his mind to deceive his brother. He joined his mind to deceive his brother. So if that's greatness, that's why we got so much evil in the world today. And most of the deceitfulness come from our women. Look at your Bible. Men don't care about our petty things. We just won't get out there and do what we got to do. It's the women who bring all the emotional thing in there. Oh, you better look at your all your part children. Look at all of them. You better think about yourself. You better think about yourself. Don't mind all of that. Though. The women start all the kind of thing. You know? And it has been going on. All the wars that start in the world because of women. Because of women. And we got to face it. Our women are strong. That's strength. For that misdirected strength. Women have the power to persuade men, to change men's minds, to change men's hearts. But if the women themselves are not conscious 
and our understanding and our conscious of their own lives, their own plights, the plights of the, the country and the nation, or the more concerned about their own plights than anybody else's plight. That's a two-way street, and both of them can be bad. Because if you don't think, if you're neglective, neglective of your rights and duties and don't care about anybody, you're just as bad. If you don't care about yourself too. Some people are neglective like that. Other people are the other way, thinking they're doing it for themselves and their family. But both of those paths are bad. They can be good and they can be bad. Nothing wrong with you protecting your family. But if you take, protect your family that to the point that you know decency, law, order, the plights of other people around you, you create serious problems. And this is where our country is today, man. Ellen Johnson Sirleaf is a false president of the Republic of Liberia. And as long as she's president in Liberia, our country will never prosper and grow. Because our laws from the founding of Liberia told us that our country cannot rule be ruled by first generation mixed children of black and white family. They can't rule our country. Why? Because our country and people have been enslaved, abused, denied decency, denied rights, then been treated as inhuman for years since the beginning of knowing ourselves as a people. Except our ancient history like Egypt and all of that that we don't even know today. But for instance, we knew ourselves in the modern world, we have been enslaved. We have been enslaved by the church. We have been enslaved by the governments. We have been enslaved by the people, white, Mexican, Spanish, Jews, every one of them that look white have enslaved us. Black Jews are enslaved in Israel right now. They're fighting for their rights. They're God people, but not as much God people as the white Jews. We can't go on like this. We can't go on like this. Ellen Johnson Sirleaf was not supposed to be a president of Liberia. She is a mulatto woman. Philip Banks, Johnny Lewis, Fanny Sherman, all the lawyers in Liberia then and now know that. So you have betrayed our country. You have betrayed our laws. A white a mulatto woman started a war in our country and you're hiding it to protect her. You are hostages in your own country. But no woman can kill my father. Cause me to suffer for 40 years to put myself in exile. Then she come back and be president of my country. And tell me I can't wait for her because she want to steal my thing, my country money, because she know I one of the Congo boys that will not stand up for that stupidness. I am not elite. I am not in that Congo country shit. I am a Liberian. I have been a Liberian trained to lead my country from birth. So I know what it means to lead Liberia and Liberian people. And no mulatto woman can lie to me because America don't care about us. London don't care about us. France don't care about us. They care about our resources just as they do in every other African country. They don't care about us. So they will put anybody on us. They will give them any damn prize that the world, white people, love. And us white people, just, or Africans, just worship any damn thing. What does a Nobel Peace Prize got to do with our people's survival? It's to please the white world. To tell the world where Ellen Johnson Sally is a leader of peace. Where? Where is Ellen Johnson Sirleaf a leader of peace? 300,000 of my people died on our watch because she betrayed us. 
with Bacchus Matthew, with Emma Sawyer, with, 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 with what they name, Famule, with, with, with uh, and all, and, and do Macy, with all the useless people in our government today, still leading our country for 50 years, and you're sitting down there, sitting, calling these people honorable, honorables, calling them leaders of a country of murderers and killers of our fathers and mothers. Then you want me to honor this false president like we will call Ellen Johnson Sally? You want me to honor a stooge of the Nobel Peace Prize people who gave Ellen Johnson $5 million and all of that because she killed our people and destroyed our country? And just so she couldn't look so bad, they shared it with Garmin. That way they shared Garmin, you just a stooge on this Peace Prize thing. They didn't want to give it you want to get all to Ellie. But Ellie couldn't take all because she was she a fluke and a fraud and a useless Liberian. And we gotta punish Ellen Johnson Sally. If you all wait till this woman died to punish her, it's on you. Me? I won't punish her right right now. I won't pull that woman out of where she's living. Have all her security arrested. Put that woman in jail and prosecute her and all the other warlords. You all sit your stupid, foolish selves down and wait for war crimes court. It's on you. Attorney Commander J. Ira Kopok by Chesson A's. The law in Liberia. No other people person can stand before me and talk law to me in Liberia. And talk justice. And talk fairness. And talk leadership, talk community, call unity, integration, diversity of our people. What wrong with you? You must be crazy in Liberia. You all don't know Ellen Johnson Sally and George Weah got your hostages in your own country for 15 years or more. Then you're talking about let this dummy stay there for another three years because foreigners want him in our country. Because foreigners think that the quasi peace we got in our country, that peace, no money in our country, my nieces and nephews out of school. Are you crazy? Then you telling me I must sit down and let this dummy, useless dummy run my country? You all sit down and wait for three years. But where I come from, you all are just as dummy. You all can't eat. Y'all can sleep, and for peace sake, y'all got this dummy leading our country, going to meet foreigners and other things, the man can speak English, the man can write a damn sentence for, the man dancing, teaching our children to be drunk and sloppy and falling in the street, the zombie dancer, singing Rasta song for your Jamaican girlfriend and all cussing the Liberian people, demeaning us, Singing happy birthday song to his Ghanaian girlfriend and paramours all over the world. Who are you dumb people in Liberia? Y'all get rid of this man. So let me just take a sip of my coffee and rest my throat before I get into my last lesson. Because this thing is insanity. Look at all the ritualistic killing. Look at it. Look at it. Look at Eddie Johnson Sally and her children still interfering with the wealth and prosperity of Liberia. Look at our port. Ellen Johnson Sally infused her children into that richness of our port. Now they did they determining the wealth of Liberia and the Liberian people. They're telling us what we can buy for what price and not. And that the same Robert Sally who destroyed the backside of all our men for jobs in our own government. How you have a gay man that's selling the job of the Liberian people for gay sex and son of the president of Liberia, turning a whole ministry of Liberia into a gay infested ministry for jobs, not because of the people's choice, but because if you want to work in your own government, you got to give yourself up to Robert Salif and his gangs. You know those gays 
They don't do their thing one by one. They don't do it in, in the like gang sex. So you got all the our children joining the gang sex with useless men like Robert Salif. You better jail that man now before I come back. You better jail that man now before he sounds so disgusting. He smells disgusting to me and I'm not even near him. You better jail that man. You can't destroy our children for jobs in our government. That's criminal. That's immoral. That's wicked. That's devilish. That's a sin. And you need to be punished for the rest of your life. And look at her other son, Charles Sally. The banker for her war in, 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 in war enterprise. She taking and putting there in our central bank. The same way they fooled the native people and stole all the money from them when Ellen was were, were ruling Ulimo and Charles Sally. Why you think Charles Sally and Ben and I you kick her out? Because they knew she wanted all the wealth for, for herself. So they said to hell with that woman, we will take the wealth. She mulatto. We own the country. So they took the wealth and kicked Ellen out. And what Ellen had to do, run back to her Nobel Peace Prize people to get George, to get Charles Taylor out of Liberia. The same Nobel Peace Prize people came back and fought, got Charles Taylor back, put him in, and sent him to work called Crown Court, now he's in jail. Ellen Johnson supposed to be in that jail with Charles Taylor. Ellen Johnson is supposed to be in that jail with Charles Taylor. You see how our women wicked too? Our women just as bad as our men. So you all cut the foolishness about Liberian women. I don't stand on the foundation. I stand on the foundation of law and justice. I don't care who you are. You violate our laws. You impress. You you imprison our children. You suppress their lives. You're gonna be fucked and jailed for life. Woman, man. I ain't got that in my vocabulary. The only thing in my vocabulary is Liberian people. My young children, open your eyes. Wake up. Smell the feces flowing all in the street. If it doesn't blow your mind, smell it some more. Aluta! Continue. Liberians. There are two profound characteristics or inherent things that make us Liberians. Besides naturalized Liberians, one of the things is our birth in the country that we call Liberia. That's the first thing that makes us Liberian. The second thing that makes us Liberian is our traits, characteristics. These things are profound essences of who we are. Our characteristics. What kind of people are we? What are our behavioral traits? What are the actions and similar traits we have that identify us as Liberians, people of profound history, culture, lifestyles. Those are the only things 
who are we as born Liberians? All of us in Liberia, we have a similar cultural trait that makes us all Liberians. That when we say, oh, Liberian people this and Liberian people this, excuse me, and we are correct in many aspects, it's because after 100 and something years of interacting, of fussing, of fighting, of joining each other on projects, we have developed a similarity in ourselves, our, the way we talk. You can distinguish a Liberian from a Ghanaian. From a, once a Liberian open him up, you know you are he Liberian. It matter whether you educated, you conquer, you country. Once you open your mouth, anywhere you are, whether you 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 the most illiterate person in our country. Once you open your mouth, all Liberians know you are Liberian. You got to tell me. Certainly the way you behave, certainly the way you look, your facial characteristic, I know you from my country or you from Africa. So there are certain traits, inherent traits, that make us who we are. And we're in that structure. Is our characteristic, behavioral, active, cultural, all of those things are infused within those traits. And when I talk about character, behavior, look at our country now, how you're behaving, how our indigenous people have behaved from time immemorial. It's cultural traits. It's in them. That one makes every tribe different. They say they're similar, but they're not similar, they're different. Because there are small things in them that differentiate them from each other. And those small things are stressed upon to identify themselves as being different from other tribes. Listen to Prophet Key when he's talking. He can tell you who the bass are people how to behave, how to cool people and crown people. They study those kind of things. They study it. But for me, I can't study those kind of things. I'm wasting my time. Because my people, mentality, what to amalgamate our whole country. To unify, to integrate us. So yes, we can have our differences. But when it comes to Liberia, there's one Liberia for all of us. And that's what sustains a nation. Look at America. Even with Donald Trump craziness and mental sickness and, and Mitch McConnell mental sickness and Ted Cruz mental sickness and, and Marco Rubio mental sickness and, and, and Josh Harley mental sickness and, and all of those people do one for the something and, and, and Republicans after the, the attempted coup that still wanted to and, and destroy America. They are all racist. They're mentally sick. If you want to be one man ruling our country, you got to be mentally sick. Look at the Russian people now. Uprising. One man telling the whole country they got to change the country. And the people are uprising. Because they know one man leadership is death to a nation. Or ignorant dumb man and his useless followers stealing and robbing our country and lying to us consistently and habitually are traitors and don't deserve to be leaders of our country. But who are we? We are born in Liberia, but we have lost the second aspect of who Liberians are. Our characters our behaviors, our moralities are all flawed, are all screwed up and need to be revised. Because if we want to predict our future, we got to pre pre we got to be able to create it. We can't create no future for Liberia now because we cannot predict our society. We cannot predict 
who we are. We cannot predict what the functions and, 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 and rules of leadership and law and order in our country are supposed to be. We cannot. We are so inherently corrupt in our minds, in our spirits, in our physical actions. And we need to check ourselves because before we wreck ourselves, we are born in Liberia, but we have no characteristics of honest, trustworthy, patriotic Liberian people. My young children, I just broke it down short to you. I've reached one hour. I've got a flip, flap, lip, lap, get out of here. This is a weekend, I gotta practice, you know, I don't go out no more, I'm an old man. I don't wanna to go to no functions. I don't wanna to go to, I hardly wanna to go to the supermarket, man. I got nobody to take care of me, man. I can't trust my own people. My people want to kill me over bullshit. They kill my grandfather over bullshit. And we're still living under that life. That stupid, divisive, evil, selfish lifestyle. My children, I heard Jonathan and Leo Johnson talking this morning, how our own problems. Definitely. Definitely. That's why I don't like people calling me because I got an important lesson to teach and the BS is enough. The old man got to go, my people. The papay got to spread. Aluta. Continua.